Hi guys, my name is Olivia Fenyon and a very short while ago I was £125,000 in debt and I managed to pay it off in just four years. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, the best place to be wherever you are on your wealth journey right now. Today I wanted to talk about debt and I wanted to think about debt and I wanted to open a conversation about debt. And I wanted to talk mostly about how I managed to find myself in so much debt because it was a huge amount, £125,000. What happened was that back in the day, I'd gone through university, I'd come out the other side and I'd gotten myself a job. And I was working as a financial advisor. It was causing me a lot of stress and headache because in order to be someone's financial advisor, that it kind of implies that you're good with money. And I was very good with other people's money and I was very good at showing people how to deal with their money and what they should be doing. Absolutely rubbish with my own finances. And this kind of came to a head eventually because work started getting harder and harder for me. I was finding it difficult to deal with people. I basically felt like a fraud. I felt like I was not an authentic person because I was helping them with their money, but I knew deep down inside that I was rubbish with my own money. And it really, really bothered me. I wanted to be good with money. I really wanted to try hard and it really got me down. So I started really not liking work. And I think that was where my problems really started to begin. Because I wasn't enjoying work and I was constantly having to deal with people and it was difficult work, it was challenging work because it's all about money. Money is a very triggering subject because I was dealing with it every day. It meant that I had people that were phoning me and they were really fearful and they were angry and they were cross. And it was all very overwhelming for me. Because I was trying to escape work when I wasn't in work, I basically took to spending a lot of money. And what happened was that I would leave work, I would go out for meals, I'd go to the pub, I'd go to restaurants, I'd go to the cinema every single week. I would eat out a lot because I just didn't want to face cooking or having to do anything else when I got home. In order to cheer myself up at the weekends, I would go shopping for clothes, shoes, you know, you name it, anything to cheer me up. I'd constantly be going on breaks with my husband as well because we wanted to just cheer ourselves up and get ourselves out of the daily grind. And it became very, very difficult. And the other thing that happened to me is because I was dealing with people's finances, I felt like I should be wealthy. And I thought, well, how can I show people that I'm actually wealthy? You've heard the phrase, fake it till you make it, right? Well, that's exactly what I did. I thought, well, the only way that I can fake having a lot of money is by spending money that I don't have. It kind of just went totally downhill. I spent loads of money all the time. And I mean, ask me now, and I have no idea what on earth I spent the 125,000 on. I literally don't know, but it, it went, the whole lot went. We also had a situation at one point where my husband lost his job. And that was absolutely devastating because we were now surviving on my income and not much else really. And he then ended up going and getting all kinds of jobs like a hotel, washing up pots. Um, he worked in a rat poison factory, which was just awful. We just had a really, really, really horrible time. Because we were trying to service the debt every single month, it was really difficult to pay it off because the moment we paid something, you know, suddenly this had all happened. And then we found ourselves, you know, spiralling even more out of control because we had very little income to actually pay anything. The thing I will say about debt is that if you find yourself in a debt situation, you know, please don't feel that you're alone. One of the biggest things for me was the feeling of having that debt was like a big black cloud kind of descended. Now I, I carry a lot of stress on my shoulders and, and my head. So it felt like this big cloud had sort of come down and was pressing its weight on me. And I just felt so heavy under the weight of this depressing cloud. It was just awful. And all I wanted to do was to get out. I was really worried because I was earning about 25,000 at the time, which to me was amazing. The 25,000 that I was earning was going out on all sorts of things. Now, student loans in this country are taken out of your wages before you they even hit your bank account. So that's already gone. And then you get taxed before it hits your bank account as well. So by the time you actually get money at the end of the month, it's a very small amount anyway. And my money had to go on my mortgage, it had to go on my bills, and then it had to start going on all of this ridiculous credit card debt and loan debt as well. If you're seriously thinking about paying off your debt, the, one of the key things that you can do is to make a decision. One of the hardest things that I ever found throughout the whole of my wealth journey was the very beginning when I actually had to look at my debt. It was so difficult. And 
for me, because I'd got this sort of crushing weight of everything happening, you know, I, I basically resigned myself to not paying my debt off until I was probably about 65 or if not even older, because there was just so much of it. But when I decided finally to have a look, I was absolutely terrified. I will say guys that it is the scariest and the hardest part of the whole process is to actually look, okay? And I know you're scared and I know it's difficult, but once you've done it, you will have certainty. And once you have certainty, you can take control. Nobody cares as much about your finances as you do. It's all about having control. And that's exactly what I did. Now for me, I woke up one morning at the end of 2011 and I had this massive voice just shouting at me in my head. The buck stops here. I heard it so loudly, this voice, it was just, the buck stops here. You have got to stop doing this. You've got to stop spending. You've got to start paying this debt off. And the voice was so loud that I had to listen to it. And for me, that was the, the deciding point. That was the turning point. Uh, and the thing that actually made me get off my bum and go and take action and actually pay the debt off. Because I'd gotten to the stage where I was so terrified of money, of talking about money. I was really worried about anybody finding out and, uh, about the debt that I had. I was so concerned that I just thought to myself, well, I have to pay it off because we've only got one life on this planet. And if I'm here until I'm 65, 70 or even older trying to pay the debt off, what kind of life am I living? You know, I don't want it to limit the choices that I have to make. You know, I want to send my kids to a good school. I want to be able to live in a lovely house. I want to be able to buy all the shoes and things that I want to have without feeling guilty and without feeling sad about everything. You know, I made that decision. And that was one of the key, key things that I did. At that point, I didn't even know how much debt I had because I was too scared to even look. I certainly didn't look at any of my bank accounts and I didn't have any budgeting set up. So I didn't do a budgeting spreadsheet. Now, if you are interested in budgeting, which is the first thing that you should be doing before you're even looking at all the loans and everything else, go and have a watch of this video just above my shoulder here. Now, back then, I didn't even want to do a budget because I was just so scared of the whole concept of money. But this voice was so loud in my head that I was thinking, right, okay, I must do something. So I started the budgeting and I started looking at what debts I had. And what did I find? Well, I got a piece of paper and I wrote them down. So I had credit card debt. The first credit card I had was an egg card. It was 500 pounds. So not a huge amount of debt on that one, but still 500 quid. I then had a Barclay card. This was the first Barclay card and that was 3000 pounds. I then had an MBNA credit card, also 3000 pounds. A second Barclay card, 4,500 pounds. And then I had a Virgin Money card, £5,500, and a HSBC card of £7,000. Now, I've no idea what I spent the money on, but I had total credit card debt of £28,000. In addition to that, I also had some loans. So I had a Kahoot loan of £3,000. I also had a Tesco loan of £7,000. And I had two Northern Rock loans. Northern Rock were one of the biggest mortgage lenders in the UK. This was pre the 2008 financial crash. Back then they had a mortgage called a Together Mortgage, which was 125%, which meant that you could actually get a mortgage for more than your house was worth. Now, today that seems absolutely crazy, but back then it seemed like a really good idea. So I thought, okay, great, you know, I'll buy a house and I'll get more than the house is worth, and that way I've got an extra loan, I can go and do something else with that money. And uh, got, got the mortgage, the, the loan attached to it, and the loan attached to the mortgage was £28,000. So that was a huge amount of money. So I had two loans with Northern Rock. The first loan was 15,000 and that was just a personal loan with them. Uh, the second loan I had with Northern Rock was part of the 125% the mortgage. That was 28,000 pounds. I had an extra debt um, as well as my mortgage. Total loans of 53,000 pounds. And then in addition to that, I also owed my family some money because they've been kind enough to bail me out of a few situations and they'd lent me some. So my youngest sisters are twins and they'd lent me £3,000 between them. And my mum had also lent me a further £25,000 as well. So I owed my family £28,000 on top of all of that. And then in addition to that, I realised I've also got some overdrafts. So my husband had an overdraft of £500. I had an overdraft of £1,000. I had very little way of servicing all the debt. And, and often I would go into my overdraft just to service the debt. So it's, it was useful at the time, but at the same time, it's just extra debt that I didn't need. So not very helpful at all, really. 
So I have 1,500 in overdraft. And then in addition to all of that, we also had our student <coughs> loans outstanding as well. So I had a £6,000 student loan at the time and my husband Ross had £9,000 student loan as well. So we had all these debts outstanding and absolutely no way of paying anything off. So if we toss all of that up, we've got 16 loans and credit cards, which come up to £125,500. Oh, £125,500. Now for me, I absolutely couldn't believe it because that is, I mean, it's a huge, huge, huge amount of money and hopefully none of you will ever get into that much debt at all. But once I'd written everything down, I actually finally knew. You know, they say, know your enemy. So I was able to actually look my enemy in the face and see the whites of his eyes and be able to then deal with it, you know, strategically. Now, what I will say, guys, is that if you're watching this and you're finding yourself in a debt situation, please, please, please don't worry. OK, there are things that you can do about it. There are practical things that you can do about it. And there's also people that you can speak to about it. OK, uh, please don't feel that you have to be alone during this process because it is hard. It is difficult, you know, but you will get through it. I did. And I really want you guys to. This is why I'm sharing my story with you guys so that you can see what I did, how I did it. And hopefully you'll be able to pick up some tips and some hints. And if it just helps somebody, then, you know, then, then my work is done. You know, that's what I want to do to give back and to help people. So 125,500. Now, do watch these two videos over here if you haven't seen them already. And also wait for the next video coming up because I'm going to tell you which loan I paid off first. OK, it's going to be really, really good because it's not what you think okay so stay tuned for the next one thank you very much indeed for watching this video and i will see you next time thanks guys